<laughs> well, okay. I don't think your neck hurting is like a symptom of getting old. Yes, it is. I think it's just sleeping poorly. Well, is a sim- is sleeping poorly is a symptom of getting old. Is it? Uh, listen. I don't know. I think I did sleep wrong, but still. It doesn't my body doesn't recover like it used to. Oh, because you used to be an, an athlete that recovered like on the dot? Yep. If my neck hurts, I don't care. I'm going to go run 8 miles in. Has that is that truly a conversation you've had <laughs> with yourself? Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. You'll never know. <laughs> I don't believe you've had this conversation. So my neck hurts. I'm gonna go run eight miles. My legs. I will say, when we ran the half marathon, you and I, my very first half, we trained for a while. And I'm a veteran already at this point when it comes to marathon. We ran like two. And that's a that's <laughs> that's that's that you're no longer a novice. Like you're. You're in the running community at that point. Fine. I'll let you have you're that a, one. You're a marathoner. And you did do Roby Creek, which is very... Now expand. Expand on that. How uh, how intense is Roby Creek? What makes Roby Creek so intense? Well, it's uphill half the time and then downhill half the time, right? Yes, it is. It's exactly up. Exactly up? Exactly up and exactly <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no mind games there is After an up you get to, and there is a down once you go up you're correct hey, and, and 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 it's like that great song which is really a, a philosophy when i get down i get, I get back, back up, up again, again. <laughs> did you i did um i remember Roby creek is pretty intense and i mean everybody talks about it if you're a local to boise area you probably know of the Roby creek race it's a very respectable race. A very respectable, very like. I'm a very respectable person. It's um, because of this race. <laughs> you're respected by everyone because of this race, but like this race sells out in a matter of hours or minutes. Oh, minutes. Minutes, because everybody wants to do it, and they only allot a certain amount of people to do it because it's a uh, not very wide. Like it's a narrow. You're running through canyons. Yes, so there's only a certain amount of people that can do it, and. You did well, it. That's How a, many years ago? Uh, I think at least two. Two, yeah. Maybe I, it, more. It, it, marathons are interesting to me that they would have a limit on such a thing, mm-hmm. right? Because you're right. It's not that wide. Yeah. But, but, but nobody's yeah. running all at the same I, I, pace. Well, right. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm leading to. It's like you can't, you can't overcrowd it. Right. right. There's always going to be people faster. Maybe it's not the actual runners. Maybe it's like they they limit the amount of people because of all the spectators that come and uh like family and friends because there are a lot of people that come and watch like at the finish line Mm -hmm. and that gets crowded i remember when we came like at the end of your race i couldn't like you couldn't find a place to sit or stand it was that crowded do you remember that? I uh, vaguely, I do remember seeing you guys there, but I don't remember it being so. So maybe that is part of it. They just don't over. want like a huge uh, amount of people at the end. It's I, not, it it's sounds not like you can. The race. Well, it sounds like you can regulate that part, right? So Roby Creek, you can only have two people. I think they said, right? Then they oh. have like a limit of how many people can be in the end. Um, right, but it's not like they were checking. I mean, I had to ride the shuttle there mm-hmm. to get to the end, um, but they weren't checking like tickets or anything like that i think it's just a a very silly concept it seems like a very easy money making machine where you go hey how many people want to do it Ten thousand, cool Ten Mm thousand people are running i guess there has to be a limit at certain at a certain point yeah but it's such a silly limit you're like you can make a lot of money i really think it's that like i wonder if it's like a like a a, you're preserving the special i was just gonna say that i think part of it is maybe they don't want a ton of people at the finish line just like gathered in crowds and but I think a lot of it probably is they want to keep that like prestige of the race. Mm, prestige like, worldwide. Yeah. Like they don't want it to become this like, oh, anybody can do it. It's like, no, you have to register. It sells out. It's kind of like this. Yeah. There's, yeah, a, hard there's to, an effort. Right. Because I remember setting an, an alarm <laughs> for like. There's an effort during the race and even before the race. There's right. an effort. What would you say the hardest part is? Well, register. <laughs> registering. <laughs> Yeah, you were. You had an alarm set. You had to like stay yes. at, well, it was in the morning, but you If had, I like, remember correctly, it sold out in 13 minutes. Yeah, insane. It, but it, I think it was like under, I think it was like 1,500 people were running it or something like that. I don't think it was that many people. It was, and then that's why, not a lot, but and a lot of people want to do it. Anyway, what was I saying? Well, oh, you were yeah. saying how prestigious I am. So, <laughs> how respected and how, just noble and all the words. Just a real King Arthur. Just, but Roby Creek, I will 
I will hand it to you was well, a I'll very take it. hard race. <laughs> there you go. I will take that and I will cherish it. <laughs> it's a hard race. So yeah, you did go through. And then before that, you did a, a half, maybe like a half a year before that. Uh, a year? Probably, I don't know. yeah. Something. Like, maybe a year. But... I believe it's about a year. And then I decided to do the half. And then you're like, well, I'll join you. It'll be mm-hmm. easy. Yeah, I'll, I've I'll... already done two. How <laughs> hard can it be? <laughs> How hard could it be? Although, I don't even have to train. Although that that one that you did and I was there, my uh, I didn't anticipate the last. Usually these. Oh like, yes, they'll make it hard the first like. Usually half, you and it's then the hard, second half is a coast, kind of, yeah. right? So this is the opposite. Yeah. It was like, oh cool, like I could see the finish line. It's like a mile away, but it's like this like uphill. And mile. then you go literally almost a mile uphill yeah and you end up burning all of your like glycogens and you now you're cramping you up have, and so yeah. like i had to like wobble up that hill and- well that's what i was gonna go back to is we i don't remember why we started talking about the half but anyway i don't know <laughs> this that is half weird. um you and i did it together and i just remember um like we trained for it we took two months or three months beforehand and trained like pretty well where it was like every week I would increase an extra mile. Can I tell you? I was faking my my runs. No, because we ran together. (laughs) Okay. We would like drop the kids off at school and go run on the days you would be home. Do you remember that? Uh, On um, the boys, uh, the green belt. Oh, we did do Mm -hmm. that, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And we would do like 10 miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a half is 13 point. Two? 13.1. Yeah. Something like that. And um, so we trained. I felt like my body was ready. I felt really good. And then... Was this post-Beckham born? Oh, yeah. This was like two years ago only. Oh, was it? Yeah. Mm. Next... It was right before I got pregnant with Harper. Oh, like okay. That's right. That's before. right. It was yeah. right because it was your like... I think it's your last... I remember you're saying before yeah. we were trying for another kid, you're like, I, I want to do, do the, the Yep. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That was it. So it's going to be two years this... September. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So not that long. I believe ago. you. Oh, gosh. I believe you. <laughs> um, also, I don't know if this is TMI. Tell him. But the I bleeding? started my Post- period that exact, like two minutes before the race started. You are going to have so many people doing calculations at home right now based off of like yeah. when you're cycling. <laughs> <laughs> like, it changed because I had a baby. So nobody will know anyway. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It's, they can try. It's, it's a scrimmage. Yes. <laughs> It all got jacked up. It would with be the hilarious baby. if somebody was like, "Okay, so that was She's two years ago. Right now. <laughs> she was ovulating then. The race was in the summertime or in the springtime." Sorry, had a baby between then. You don't even know. Are your guys' cycles like they flip flop? Like you can re- like you could like recalibrate essentially. What do you mean? Cycle? Well, when you have a baby, yeah, because you don't have a period when you have a baby. But I thought you can resume back when like after you're done. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> well, <I don't> know. <laughs> it just resumes back on the exact day. I never watched the full video on female anatomy. No, after you have a baby, it it can happen a few weeks after or like four to six weeks after having a baby or a year so you year don't and a just, half after having a baby you it could just, happen in but, but that's the, that's a big question it's like you, you don't just, just press resume. pause be like hey yeah the second week of september that's my day yeah. right and then like you press pause you have a baby you don't have the period blah 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 <laughs> and then you again. resume back no nope. second week of august it, it, it's it's a free-for-all at that point really? you can come at any well, time that's kind of fun any, right yeah. you're like I wonder the mystery it's the next year. And, but now it, it only gets reset this is a fun podcast now. I know. So your guys' periods get reset um, based off of childbirth, correct? So can you like Because sleep... you, don't, you don't have a period when you're pregnant. Correct. But is there other life circumstances that reset your period again? Um... Like, like if you slept in too late? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yes, this morning. It just reset. So now it's just like reset. No, um, uh, birth control. Uh, we, people we'll who it. take hormonal birth control, like uh, the pill and yeah, stuff, yeah, it, yeah. you actually don't have a cycle like well, yeah. well you do you still like ovulate but i mean look at me saying oh well yeah look like I know what you I'm well about. the pill is essentially you don't ovulate right because then you don't have the i thought the, the pill was about just getting you vitamin d and that's all it was <laughs> no anyway you don't have a period when you're on certain pills um in certain iud's actually so that kind of i guess can reset your but mm-hmm. not sleeping in not sleeping in daylight savings doesn't mess with it <laughs> flag day like if you're like east like time change east coast yeah like all of a sudden everything's thrown like off. if you went to greece and they're like 15 hours you know change of time like that doesn't delay your period by an extra <laughs> you know moon cycle I don't moon know. cycle 
it's a weird, it's a weird thing. But anyway, so also the morning of that race, I started my period and I was like, obviously didn't have anything with me. That was awesome. So you were bleeding while running? Yeah. Did you tell people you luckily were, ch- had you black people you're pants. Yeah. No, luckily I had black pants on, but it was like, oh yeah. Anyway. Um, that's. I know. That's, but what are you going to do? I'm not, not well, going to cancel the you know race. What, and you know what? That's I think not, I like that's put not, toilet paper in there or something. I don't know. That's not the grossest thing because... I've heard people in the oh running do it like purposefully yeah do purposely what uh, well I remember there was a big um do you not remember that it was a few years ago people there was a the big periods? no there was a big um article or something somebody posted about a, a a woman who was on her period who purposefully didn't wear anything and she wore white um purposely oh purposely it's wore what, white like leggings oh, to geez. show like this is a woman like this is my this is me right now, this yeah. is me. just like this is what we go through hey, but it was like a big thing did you not i didn't read you it. remember no but also hey don't do that <laughs> hey don't do didn't that look yeah but she like ran i think a full marathon and she's like you guys don't watch me yeah. bleed out yeah. Gross. She's like, you think you're struggling right now and suffering look at this oh my god why do people need to like put that in front of people's faces yeah, I wouldn't do it. But, but anyway. Like all of a sudden, the, everybody who doesn't shave their armpits because it's empowering. I get it. If you don't want to do it, that's your thing. Right. But don't be sticking your armpits in my face, okay? <laughs> just don't do Listen, that. Listen. Yeah. Don't just come up to me and go. <sighs> I'm a woman. I'm empowered. Listen, if you don't want to do it, right, that's cool. That's yeah, fine. But don't always keep your hands up, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, put them down. <laughs> Don't always be clapping up here. It's like the guys that like don't wear underwear, which is a weird concept to me. But um, they're like, they're not walking around telling everybody all the time, I'm not wearing underwear. It's my choice. I'm like, I- it's my choice. <laughs> if we stumble across a topic, <laughs> cool. Mention it. But don't be like leading conversations with it. That's like your opening line to when you meet new people. Yeah. Hey, Mark, hey, I don't wear underwear. I don't wear underwear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to wash my hands right now. <laughs> um. Anyway, that wasn't like the big part of like my story, but... <laughs> That happened, and I want everybody to know that I was suffering. Anyway, (laughs) going back to the race, I remember I felt so good. We got our little, um, what are they called? The little packs of energy oh yeah a little, they're a little like uh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're caffeine, but a little yes, caffeine, um, gels, they're they're called gels, yeah, the gel packs, yeah, Mm -hmm. and they're high in sugar, high in caffeine. Yeah, we both start running, and maybe what was it i want to say less than five miles in i started getting this pain up and i had never had it band pain ever i remember you did Mm -hmm. your first couple of marathons because i go horror your first couple halves i won't even call it yeah i was gonna say marathons but it was why can't we call it marathons because it's still a half a marathon and then there's a full marathon but people will be like and i you know if people have ran a full marathon and you tell them you ran a half, they will look down on of you. Of course they will. Of course. And, and you know who looks down even further on you is people who run ultra marathons. Oh, yeah. And you're, you're like, nothing to them. And you're excited about running a half. <laughs> but then usually their stories leads with like, yeah, you know, like they'll, they'll look at you like you just got to high school and here's uh, this college grad and uh, you're like, oh, I'm excited for freshman year. Like. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun, it's a, it's a fun time. Yeah, like they'll just kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's it, they can't it, relate anymore. It, it could be exciting. Yeah, it could yeah. be really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Cool. and so you'll those, have a lot to learn. Yeah, I remember the first time I ran. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, um, Let me but guess, you you're had... gonna change the world. <laughs> <laughs> remember that feeling? Mm-hmm. But you have had had um, it band pain. Yes, when you ran your first. Yes, because uh, I remember you were like correct. limping after. Correct. Um, and I'm like, I was like, I don't remember. I'd never had that before. The only pain I had would, I would have ankle pain every once in a while. Anyway, we're like more than five miles in. And all of a sudden I started getting this pain down my leg to right, like my, man. yeah. It's along the knee. side of your yep. leg. Mm-hmm. It goes from your hip down to the, um, it's kind of like your the, knee, the, the, the knee, side, the side of, of your knee. knee. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh no. And I started, I could tell it was going to just get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's just that pain where it's like, this is not going away. And I remember like turning to you and I'm like, my IT band hurts. And you and I were running together the whole time. And I said, peace out, loser. That's what I said. Suck it up. (laughs) I remember that feeling. There's a chick running with no tampon right now. And I was like, I still have like so many miles to go. What am I going to do? And part of me, and this was only two years ago, so I was still like, 30. You're, you're a different woman. But part of me was like, I just want to stop and like walk. Mm. But I knew if that happened, I would never start 
like I would never go back to running. Why not? What made you feel that confident that you won't do that? Just because it's like once you stop, it's like, well, now I'm not going to get my best time. Now I'm not going to like it's just like it's a different all the vibe changes there's the energy changes there's something to the be momentum said, is gone there's something to be said about the mentality of running a, a marathon or a half marathon or any kind of race where you think because it's, it's an endurance thing mm-hmm. and there's something to be said that mentally the, the mental game that i have myself is if i stop right now that i can't tell people i ran this thing oh, i right. ran walk yes. it like that i know doesn't count. i run yeah i ran then walked away Mm-hmm. but that's kind of how it felt it was like i trained so hard for this and i wanted to do my best and like beat whatever time i had in my head you know and so i was like this sucks what should i do and i remember just like trying to power through and then i was like well what if i kind of run differently and so i started playing around in my head of like okay this hurts so i kind of started running trying to see if like a certain way of running would help and so i started running on the more of like the back of my foot the heel oh like, like a, putting more like weight on it leg. Yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> not a big leg it's like doing one of these i'm gonna run on my knees walks. <laughs> and no i just like would put more pressure on like my heels and see if that helped then i did it on my toes and see if it helped and i i started realizing if i ran more towards the insides of my feet mm-hmm it helped with the pain. And so I just kept like, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to do that. So I just kept running and the pain was there probably for like a mile, which is a lot when you're like in pain. Oh yeah, for sure. Pain. For sure. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if it was like my body just was like, got nu- like numb <laughs> to the pain. <laughs> it was just like all of a sudden I couldn't feel anything. You couldn't feel the anything? The pain went away completely. Oh, the pain. I thought you mean you had lost control of your oh. legs. <laughs> like, I, I was running on the <laughs> air. Like, you made yourself a paraplegic. <laughs> no. What is I was I you? was just floating. <laughs> I was, I was like, floating all of a through couldn't the feel anything weighted down. No, I mean like the pain I I like somehow worked it out where it, the pain went away. It was really weird. And that this never happened to me before and now i have it band pain all the time and nothing helps but then it did and i'm so happy it did because then i felt good again after like a mile i was like okay let's do this and so um going towards like the end i which is interesting that you said you that last like push the last like five yeah. to ten minutes was uphill and then you go down the hill and that last down the hill maybe it was like a minute or two Mm -hmm. is like you just sprint because you're going down the hill but that that incline up i actually got like this burst of energy which is weird because it usually well you saw a lot of people on the sidelines you you were feeling i think the energy i was i was like i was like feeling this energy i knew how close the finish line was and i could you can almost hear like the cheering and Mm -hmm. all of the the loudspeaker and everything so i was like some people are like trump 2020 and you're like and then that (laughs) that made you excited (laughs) where is that voice coming from (laughs) um so i almost got i got this like huge burst of energy and just like took off and i remember i you blew past me. I you blew past me. I left you. You did in the dust. Me. And did I leave you when you're well, hobbling on your heels? No, <laughs> but you would, a have, mile five. would you have known? But you would have never known my T band was hurting because I kept still. No. I think I did slow down a little. You I did. do remember slowing down a little because, or maybe a lot. Maybe in my head it was just a little. Mm-hmm. But it just hurt. But I was so still, bad. I always stood ne- like within yeah. pretty close to you. Mm-hmm. You did. You stayed. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, listen, yeah. it's just a minute. You'll yeah. be fine. What a classic! You're such a competitor person. <laughs> I know. Like, oh, cool. It, nothing hurts anymore, and he's see struggling, it. and we're by the finish line. I want to make sure that people but see you that started, I finished. You um, like, did you walk a little up? Oh yeah. When, yeah. when we were getting up there, yeah, I, was I like, got to I the can't point walk. where I was like, I was tired of wobbling, go. and I was like. I yeah. gotta walk because I my legs were locking out and yeah yeah I I do think I burned like all that glycogen through my yeah like, you should have saved one of those packs for like the very yeah end. that would have been good but but I think the point of the story is like even back then you're just better a couple than years me ago, <laughs> I just wanted to share this it's been on my mind all day but it was like I feel like even just back then a couple of years ago I could like push through my pain yeah. I feel like now I can't. It's like I hurt so bad. I, need I think a well, well, what kind of pain are we talking about, right? I think if it's a, it's an endurance thing or if it's a survival thing. I think there's a huge concept. Like right. I heard somebody say, it's um, when we feel uh, when we approach failure, like the like are ready to give up on some kind of endurance thing. That 
I don't know what they came up with this number, but they're like, you're only at 40% of your capacity. Mm -hmm. And so there's a huge part of it that has to do with like your mental state to overcome your, basically you're wrestling your own brain. Oh yeah. So much of it is And your body figures out the rest of it. But it's, that's an endurance and a survival primal thing. You're not going to do that when your ankles hurt from coming out, you know, sleeping on them for too long. Right. You know? Or like just working out a random workout at home. Right. And complain. I went for, the a, most you can. I went for a run on the treadmill this morning and like my left, every once in a while, my left knee starts like acting up, mm-hmm. but it's not like, oh, let's endure this pain. It's like, it's not an endurance yeah. thing. I, <laughs> that's true. I think that's the difference is like, it depends what you're doing on what you're doing. Right. And the level of well, like... I got a COVID sneeze coming up. Hold on, uh-oh, so. uh-oh. COVID. Don't sneeze on me. I lost it. I lost it. A good Dang. sneeze can go a long way. That's the problem. You don't say you're going to sneeze because you'll uh, always lose it. But I didn't want you to be like, what are, you, are you having a heart attack? Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the sound comes out? There's just like six <laughs> seconds of quiet. Try to hold it in. <laughs> There's like six seconds of quiet and like awkward faces. It's like, oh God, he's having a stroke. What is he <laughs> doing? Was, you know like the people that hold in the sneeze and they go... <laughs> <laughs> wait wait well i hold it in because i go i hold it in and then i have this internal sneeze it, goes, yeah. it's like, <laughs> it still feels good still feels good yeah there's an argument it's like you look terrible and that sound is the worst i remember i had it i did it a few times when i would begin like you know like remember in high school sure. where you're trying to be super cool i remember there's a few times i tried to hold it but it was still it was already past they the farted. point of no return <laughs> <laughs> no, that I'd like I'd be like, <laughs> 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 make things even worse. And I'm like, oh my god. No, the worst it's one would probably worse. be either either a fart or the worst <laughs> the one would sneeze be fart. Yeah, sneeze fart would be the worst. Which Our they're kids so do rare. All the time. <laughs> I smacked Beckham for something <laughs> yesterday because he was being inappropriate. Uh, and then <laughs> no, what he was doing is he was, he was at a dinner table at the dinner table. He was, and he, he got up. And he, well, he got up. And he farted. And I was like, hey, dude, did you just fart around the dinner table? And he starts laughing. Yeah. And so I smacked him. And then he started, he, he let go like three more farts as he's like walking away. And then he started as laughing he's as he's laughing. And then he's you're like, farting. you're like, are you? So he's, he's no, laughing. No, what happened was he was, you, you said, are, did you fart? But he was still like farting as you were talking to there him. Was like and then like when you smacked him, he like started g- crying, but still kept farting. <laughs> You kind of smacked the fart out of him. <laughs> oh my god! But and then he started laughing because we were all laughing. Right, and he's a to those kids farting is like the funniest thing in the and world. Then he started crying, and I couldn't tell. I was like, are you crying? Was like, yes. It was like I was like, oh dude, I'm sorry. It was, it was really sad because he was laughing because we were all laughing yeah, and it was funny. But yeah. then I looked at him back. I'm like, Peckham, are you laughing or crying? He's like, yeah. I'm laughing, but yeah. I feel like crying. Yeah. I smacked his chest. That's what I smacked. I didn't smack his like anything else. But I was like, no, you were just kind of like, I flicked dude. His, I, yeah, yeah, I flicked. Kind of flicked I flicked him. his chest. Yeah, I flicked his chest. It's, so nobody thinks like Beat back him. Hand, back no, you were just kind of like, Beckham, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah. And and then he like just kept farting just. as he's crying to the. So the worst <laughs> one would be like you sneeze and then snot comes out or. Oh, or fart I've comes had out. the snot plenty of times. I've had snots come out. And so you're not bad. ready for it every time because it's no. it's like unexpected. Like I, you don't have anything up your nose. All of a sudden. Pfft, yeah. Anyway, I'm the pretty, sneeze farts. I'm pretty too, notorious though. when I was a kid in in high school. Uh, for having those like snot rockets come out, and it was so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing because it lands on something. It's a big loogie, or it's like on your skin, and you're like, everybody's watching. What am I supposed to do? Like get up, or do I like? Or just brush or you it sneeze off? in your hand, and then you have a big loogie in your hand, and you're like, I don't Crap. have a tissue. Yeah, what the do back I do of my this? pant leg is getting this. Yeah. So. Ugh. Yeah. Gross. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a lot of troubling times. Oh man, it was a good story. I remember that race. Yeah. Going back to that, yeah. I'm was... more troubled about that gal with white pants with her period running across <laughs> this thing, dripping on everybody. I'll have to find a picture for you, but... You should have told people you, when you were having your period, you should have been like, I'm chafing. I'm just... I'm like, chafing, yeah. <laughs> skin but skin the rubber. high you get, which I don't know if you had it because you've already ran. Maybe it was your first race you had that high, but... You always have that Oh high. my gosh. Finishing that race and mm-hmm. you feel... I remember like for the first like 10 even 20 minutes i felt amazing and then as the day went on i was like i'm gonna die i'm gonna die this i'm like I can't my legs hurt so yeah, what I'm happened start- with you what happened with you so you're on your period you're running this race you're wearing black pants so fortunately nothing couldn't, couldn't see, see anything yeah. did did it soak oh man some people are like probably it's gross gonna be, sorry did, TMI. Is, it, is it is it soaked pretty did it ever get to your no. kneecaps the nice not nice but like the fortunate part about the very very first like 
maybe four to five hours i start my period it's it's not super heavy it gets heavy after that oh now so you, now you really narrow down your people, period with yeah people. so it wasn't running down my legs i mean there was like you know some interesting i'm sure if i was wearing white pants you would definitely see it also why would but you wear white pants during a half during a marathon even sweat yeah you'd be able to see like sweat yeah it's like th- somebody could throw like a glass of water on your crotch and see everything i know oh yeah for sure okay well that's but a black f- black pants black yoga pants shout out to is. black yoga pants <laughs> <laughs> what about if you wore shorts and just oh, shorts that would have been really bad yeah that would have been really bad so let that be a lesson to you folks um if you're considering running a marathon and it's close to that lunar cycle of yours, um, consider the wearing cycle. Cons- consider wearing uh, yoga pants that are black, not shorts. <laughs> All right. Well, this Good has times. been fun. Um, we're going to take a quick break and invite our guest, Sam from DIY Huntstress over. Um, Sam's been a, a friend of ours for a long time. She's a fellow content creator, blogger, um, and just a great person. So we'll let's get Sam on board here. Hey, Sam, uh, you're a doctor, so we want to ask you to settle a question because we were just talking right before this. Apart from pregnancies and birth (laughs) control, is there anything else that can reset a female menstrual cycle? Like, like, what do you mean? Like, be more. I just like, be more specific about the menstrual cycle, but that's disgusting. But like, <laughs> <laughs> you're we a just doctor. had you a can't full say it's conversation disgusting. about this. We had a we had a conversation about about. She was sharing a story how she, we she ran a half marathon with me, and she just started her period on the morning of no, five minutes before the race started. I started my period. So and I, fun. oh Lord. <laughs> and I and I said that's ill prepared on your part. And yeah, I said, is there you something we can do known. to reset it? To you can post date it. <laughs> and she says, well, you can re, you can reset it or no. change the cycle of it, right? No, I said when you have a baby, you don't have a period for a while when you're pregnant, right. and then who knows how long after anyway. And he was like, what else resets it? And I was like, I don't know, like birth control. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, birth control. Yeah, because when you're when you're on birth control, you can actually choose to like skip it if you want to. Right, right. So you can essentially get on. So if you're like, let's just throw a number out there. Let's say your cycle is the second Tuesday <laughs> of every month. This is too much information right? for people. Well, it's all right. They'll figure it out. If your cycle is like the second Tuesday of every month, and you're like, that's kind of inconvenient because you know this year Thanksgiving falls on that week, and I really don't want to do Thanksgiving. Can you be like, I'm gonna get on birth control for yep. like three mm-hmm. months? And then start it back up again. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah, where... Yeah, you yeah. don't want to have a cycle on this sp- certain See, that's day. amazing. That's amazing. That's, a, that's how you schedule your life, okay? So next time we're going to Cabo, right, plan ahead. Plan ahead. The female body is a wonder. That's yeah. for sure. Really is, yeah. Well, we just had a really long conversation about this whole topic. So that was real fun. Yeah, it was about 30 minutes of bleeding while running a marathon. Yeah, good times. Oh, people are going to love that. Uh, this is not a DIY podcast, so we got to say that right out of the gate. Yeah. We're, we're not talking business here. We're talking, we're talking, we're talking life. We everything. essentially, everything fi- under the sun. We essentially figured out a way how to have people over for dinner without having to cook for them by doing a podcast like this. This is, that's kind of how we're doing it. I mean, I'm not going to lie though. Like I wouldn't be mad if you want to like send me some food after this. That'd be dope. Well, yeah. I'm glad you said that because well, we got eats. some Uber Eats coming your way here the next six minutes. What is your favorite food? Yes. Um, I'm like a huge like grilled cheese. Like if there's grilled cheese on a menu anywhere, it's getting ordered. Like, I don't know why. Really? It's just like, com- it's like comforting. I don't know. Grilled it cheese is. and tacos are my two go-tos. Now tacos are respect. Tacos, yes. Respect That's, on tacos. Now, grilled cheese. You, you like grilled cheese. I like grilled cheese, but that was my that was my question for you. Is the grilled cheese, does it have to be like a gourmet kind of grilled cheese? Because I've had like an adult version of a grilled cheese mm-hmm. where they had this expensive Texas, well, I don't know if it's expensive. It's just Texas bread, <laughs> super fluffy. You know, yeah. they got this like probably an inch There's and a half of cheese. probably science behind it. You know, are you talking about that kind of gourmet or are we talking about go to Applebee's, get a grilled cheese, cut it in half and we're good to go? I will say, like, I am a little picky. Like, if I get grilled cheese, it has to be cheddar at minimum. Like, there needs to be cheddar on my grilled cheese. But, like, three cheese grilled cheese is next level. I will I will order that three any day. Cheese. What's the three cheeses? Don't think is I've it, had that. What's the three cheeses? Is it mozzarella, cheddar? It depends on what establishment you're eating at. Because you can, oh. like, go as far as to have, like, really? you know, really bougie, stinky cheeses on your yeah. well, grilled and that's cheese. What I was, on there. Yeah. And that's what yeah. I was wondering. I was wondering if it's, like, when somebody says three cheeses, I wonder if it's, like, a... Like the Tris Leches thing. You got like, 
You got your Gouda. You got your mozzarella. You got your, you know. Gouda's the only fancy cheese he knows. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and it's, qu- it's questionable. He's like your Gouda and then the smoked I counts. Gouda. <laughs> it counts. <laughs> is, that the, is that the stuff you have to break off when you eat it or can you slice it into Gouda, it? you slice. Yeah. It would it be awkward if I made a sandwich Brie, and put Gouda cheese Brie on it? probably would be good. Huh? Would it be awkward if I made a sandwich and put Gouda cheese on it? Just like crumbs of it? Is that weird? No, it's not. It's probably delicious. Yeah, it's kind of delicious. There's, I've yeah. heard of Gouda grilled cheese. Sandwiches. Yeah, but you can't. You, you're gonna go end up in the hospital because you have your dairy allergies. Yeah, true. <laughs> I can't. But. Sam, Sam, how old are oh you? I am 31. 31. So have you found? And we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago. Have you found that when you when you pass 30, have you found that there's certain things you can't eat or drink uh, anymore that you could have before? Yes, dude. Okay, so I love talking about this because even though like my name is DIY Huntress, I can't eat meat, which I feel like is so funny because people are always like, are you a hunter? And I'm like, no, I'm not a hunter. No. But like meat makes me so sick. Like, I don't know. Really? I cannot digest meat. Like, I don't it? know what it is. Really? Yeah, I have a... I have not eaten meat in a long time because I'm just like so. It's like not worth it. It's just not worth it. And DIY um, vegan does not have a ring to it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Could you imagine DIY like, what vegan? The, <laughs> <laughs> the DIY DIY vegan. gatherer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yep, no, but seriously, I feel like you hit a certain age and like your body's just like, nope, do not even try me anymore. I know, yep. Okay, so that was me for you. It sounds like you had like a, a meat almost like allergy or, or intolerance, but was there something like you were like, oh, I used to drink like micro brews and now I can't have like heavy beers or I can't have nachos before bed or else I'm like sweating. No, but you know, you know what? Like what? hangovers are intense after 30, I feel like. Oh, I have like yes. one glass of wine and the most epic migraine the next day. Your, my body is like, we did this, we did this shit when you were like 21 right. we're done we're, not doing <laughs> we're done like, seriously have oh my you... gosh how true is that oh it's, it's like a couple glasses yeah and i will feel it, it like immediately like the night before i'm already like but you know oh. what we're all thinking though yep. here's what we're all thinking we're all thinking do we go too hard like yeah. right, right now is this why we're, this is happening <laughs> two glasses is two Did glasses go, too hard oh like too hard back in the 20s no no too hard like right now oh. you're like because like right now like i found myself having more alcohol frequently because you have kids you have a career you have a job you're like so it's very rarely that you'll have like a glass or two of wine or a whiskey like after dinner or before dinner and so you kind of go like i just woke up with a hangover after like two three drinks like am i there's people who don't have any alcohol in their 30s. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, but that's just true. And though, this because is why. <laughs> yeah, like at 21, right? Like we were like, the only time I drank was at like Ragers. I like, I was such a college kid. I was like, yeah, we're going to frat parties. We're going to drink. And that was the only time I drank. And now we go to dinner and like, I get a beer with dinner. I get wine yeah. with dinner. I get right. te- tequila with dinner. And yeah. maybe like my body's like, what is happening? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Cause we're back here again. Because during the Ragers, they, they would happen like on the weekends or like, you know, maybe like you an early start. All the time. It's, yeah. you, you'd, you'd be spaced out from like not having alcohol to like having alcohol. But like now, like as adults, we're like, like every night. Yeah. Is, is my liver giving out? <laughs> <laughs> my body's not happy with me. So it's nice to meet other adults and be like, oh, no, I'm I can't do this ones. anymore either. Right. Yeah. Have, have you discovered the magic of liquid IV yet? I have not. I've heard of it and I've never like tried it. Preach. Plenty preach, of preach ads for it. I will say a lot of people advertise it. It is awesome. Strawberry is the best flavor, I would say. I'll say the, the mandarin or Somebody said uh, lemon, lemon lime is really yeah. good. I have not tried it. But it... It's voodoo. It works really well. And at first I thought it was like all in our like my head. I was like, oh, it's like the placebo effect where you're like, I'm taking it. Then I feel great in the morning. But it really does hydrate you and you feel awesome. Like we take it now after working out. Because mm-hmm. we drink when we work out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just like really like pounding tequila shots yeah. in between reps. <laughs> <laughs> we have over the treadmill. We have like a box wine, of wine, wine and like yoga, a brown yeah. seal wine, just like a little straw, like a little hamster on a hamster uh, wheel. But like just in general, like with replenishing your electrolytes and what else does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like all electrolytes. Certain proteins stuff. And, and it's it's just a little packet, and you put it in a, a bottle of water, and especially, especially essentially it's supposed to be like four bottles of water to like one thing, but it has the potassium, the sodium. It's low on sugar, but like. If you if you go a little too hard the night before, or you have, or you, you just know, want to feel good in the or morning, two glasses of wine before bed, and you're like, I'm gonna feel dehydrated or, or a, a, a headache in the morning. You take one of those, and you feel great. You just feel it completely really normal. Work. I just feel like as an adult, I'm like permanently dehydrated all the time. Seriously, yes. exactly. <laughs> yes, because that's like, for you. Because, are you are you a big coffee person? 
I like literally as we're talking, it is four yeah. o'clock here and I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. And that doesn't affect your sleep? No. I I'm like that weirdo who can like go out to dinner and have espresso after dinner and still pass out at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a unicorn. Do you, <laughs> you used to be able to do that. I, I still your think 20s. I can do that. And I, I can't. I think it attributes to like, cause you're always go, 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 right? You're in New York, yeah. right? Yeah. And so like life goes at a faster pace in New York than anywhere else, correct? No, totally. I, anywhere else I go, I'm like, wow, this feels like slow motion sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I wonder, so my theory is, is I think it's like the people who put a lot on their plate and are constantly stimulated that like their body by the time goes to bed, they go, I don't care if you had five cups of coffee, I'm going to sleep, you know? Yes and no. Like I am that person who like lays down. I'm like, I'm so tired and I lay down and then my brain starts thinking about like, what's the meaning of life? How are stars right. yeah. in the universe? <laughs> like what kind of extraterrestrials are watching me from above? Like, yeah. and then and next thing you know, it's like two in the morning and I'm like, I'm literally not yeah. thinking about anything productive right now. That's yeah. hilarious. You're such a, like a helpless romantic with aliens. You're like, what extraterrestrials are watching me right now? <laughs> Do you think they I'm like, like me? Yeah. And I'm like, I know they're out there. I hope they like me. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Can we be friends. Oh, that's hilarious, Sam. I'm seeing your uh, Murphy bed that's behind you right there, yeah. and that video is a banger. I think it's like close to a million views on YouTube right now, right? Yeah, it is. It's like it's almost a hundred thousand shy. Like I'm almost at that benchmark. I don't have a video that's hit a million yet, and that one is eventually going to be the one. So. I'm honestly, it's the project that I'm most proud of, to be quite honest. Um, really? So yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm stoked on it. Yeah. Is there? Well, I've, 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 I'll be completely honest. I've built a Murphy bed only because like you built a Murphy bed and a couple other people built a Murphy bed. I was like, I need to try building the Murphy bed, and my video did not do well at all. Yours did exceptionally well. Do you? Did your video cook for a little bit? You know that cooking period where you like make a video, you put it out, and it usually sits for like a few days before like it Blows goes up. vertical mm -hmm. or did yours um, go off uh, out of the gates like in an incline right away i feel like most of my videos are cookers the murphy bed mm -hmm. was not a cooker the murphy bed kind of took off right away i think part of it too i'll be quite honest um is this took me so freaking long to build and i was like on instagram all the time being like this shit is not working the way that i wanted to or like this is taking so much longer <laughs> than i wanted to and so people were like living through this project with me and i think that so many people were, were so excited. stoked. They were just like just as excited as I was to finally see it go live. And so it, it definitely picked up a lot of speed right away. Um, but other than that, yeah, most of my videos are cookers. They just kind of, you know, my really loyal audience is awesome and they're there for me. And then we I don't I kind of don't even try to look at the numbers that much either anymore because I just think it is what it is. And if it's cool, it'll eventually do its thing. And, and I think that that's awesome. Right. Is that where what do you uh, build out of searchability uh, or popularity or do you build out of necessity that you want to put for your house? No, 100 percent necessity. Like, necessity. I, I mean, right now. So I, we've been looking for a house for a while. So a lot of the stuff I build is for my family, mostly um, things mm -hmm. that I know, like my family needs um, or things I'll build for like an, our apartment. But everything I build is out of like pure necessity. Mm -hmm. nice. Something you yeah. want or need. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of yeah. like us. Like every time you're like, hey, um, I want this. Can I you want build this. it for me. <laughs> like that's how I got started because I was yeah. a, we were mm -hmm. we were broke when we got married, and so she wanted these things and I couldn't buy them. So I'm like, well, let me try to make it, and then you know, failing horribly, but you know, eventually learning something <laughs> out of it. Coming yeah, along. but that's how I started too. Like I was a broke college. Kid. I was in I was in college for nine years getting my PhD. So like. I couldn't hold down a real job while juggling all these crazy classes and internships mm -hmm. and residency and stuff like that. So like for me, I, I was like always broke. So I'm like, I'm just going to build this stuff. Like I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a dress or I can make that for two fifty. Right. you know, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. not going to go to Ikea to do it. Right. Like I'm going to make it out of quality material right. that is going to last longer. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, I don't know if you feel this way, but I don't ever want to like, I'm doing air quotes like people can see me. I don't want to ever like want to re <laughs> repeat a project in the sense of like, I don't want to do the same exact project twice, mm -hmm. but I do want to like find a way to do it differently. So I'm learning something new, you know, mm -hmm. putting a spin on it. Interesting. Yeah. Do you, yeah. um, how, so it's interesting that you, you spent nine years going to school. Uh, wait, what's your degree in psychology? 
Psychology. Okay. And you graduated, I believe, a year or two ago, right? You got your degree. Uh, two wow, 2017. 2017. So, yeah. Four. Interesting. Four years. Four, yeah. four, years, four years is past May, yeah. And then when did you start YouTube? About the same time. Because I started YouTube during grad school. I always like say it's like a loose start because I literally my first year put up two videos because it scared the crap out of me. Like I put up one video, it did well. And then people were like, when's the second one coming out? And I was like, I don't know. And then I came out like <laughs> nine months later. And then I was like, this shit's scary. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. You freak out. Be like, wait, I have to do more videos? Yeah. I was like, wait, I have to like what, sit in front of yeah. Like, isn't, wasn't that enough? Like I have to do more. So... My first year was kind of a wash because I really only posted like two videos. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to say I probably started my channel four years ago and then didn't get super serious about it until about three years ago. So this is the interesting concept because most time people like have a career. They hate what they do. You know, example myself, right? I was I graduated uh, respiratory therapy, worked in the industry for like seven years, hated the long hours being away from the kids and all that stuff, and then started something else to kind of get myself out of it. But you kind of started both, well, you started the YouTube channel while you were doing schooling, but yet you're still doing both. What's the, what's the thought behind that and how long you think about doing both and are you ever gonna switch to one thing? Um, honestly, like, I just feel like I, I really love both things that I do. Like, I think a lot of people, you're right, start Kind of the content creation thing and they're looking to really build it and monetize it and maybe leave their full-time job and for me i kind mm -hmm. of i'm like i don't know i kind of want to do everything i like for as long as i can i don't know if that's right. like attainable and like you know eventually down the line maybe i'll have a family and that's going to be really hard to juggle like all of those things and i'll get there when i get there i guess but mm -hmm. i don't know for me it's like i really like the therapy aspect it's really rewarding to me i'm very like i'm really into it i'm kind of like a brain nerd so like i really like that stuff um, I think it, it translates well sometimes into marketing and it's like woodworking is my therapy, but I, I do therapy for other people. So I don't know, I guess I'm kind of like riding the wave and seeing where it takes me at this point, you mm -hmm. know? So you don't feel like you're getting burnt out from do, doing two jobs or two careers, essentially? I definitely do. Like there are definitely, I, I, I would totally be lying if I was like, yeah, never. But like there are definitely <laughs> yeah. times where I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this to myself? That's a lot to um, take on. Yeah. Oh it gosh. is, but I definitely have, like, finally, I feel like almost figured out a system where I know exactly how much I can take on content-wise while juggling, mm -hmm. you know, the full-time job and what I can say yes to, what I unfortunately have to sometimes say no to. Um, how good does do that you, feel, though? How good does it feel to have that problem where you tell a brand, hey, I'm sorry, I'm busy? Like, that, because, right, we, we, we start, and I remember when I first started, I was like, I told you her, I was like, take on any job. Any I was like, yes, my yeah. dream is like, if, if one day a company will give me a free tool, I've accomplished my dream in all of this. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. it. And then you get to the point where you're like, hey, sorry, like the content calendar is booked. It, like, it's just, it's, it's, you kind of look back, and you're like, well, that's a, a crappy business model, but you feel so good being like, I told you no. You didn't have to tell me no. <laughs> Can I tell you, like, every year, my New Year's resolution, my New Year's resolution every year is like, say no more, like, say no more times because like I yeah. never like I used to never say no to anything I think the first time I said no to a brand I felt like I wanted to vomit because I was like they're never gonna want to work how me could again. I do that yeah and then like they were awesome and they were like yeah let us know when you're free we'll wait and I was like what yeah. Yeah. like you'll wait like that happens when I say no so yeah it is nice to be able to control that aspect and be mm -hmm. like oh there are yeah. so many opportunities coming in now that I can kind of choose which one works or push things back I don't think I ever saw myself getting to that point it's an incredible feeling to grow to the point. And, and yeah, there's this understanding that you go like, well, you want to work with me, not because of my audience, but because of my personal branding. So like you saw yeah. that it fits whatever you're doing. And so, you know, they're always going to come back, you know, it's like, if it's not in this year, then next year for sure. Yeah. I mean, and at least I don't. Hope. Good riddance. <laughs> good riddance. <laughs> this is good. Can you come? How? Can you come work with yeah. me? Like, can you, yeah. can you help me? <laughs> oh no! But I just say that in theory. But really, I have the hardest time saying no to people. I'm the same. You're I will say I will say yes to one thousand people before I say no to somebody. Yes, you do. You put it's a bad. lot on your plate for sure. But I think yeah. you get to a point too where it's like, at least I feel this way. There were times I was saying yes to all these things, and I was like hating some of the projects I was doing. Yeah, I was like, this sucks, yeah. and like. I mean, I remember one time my brother watched one of my videos and he called me and he was like, so how miserable were you exactly building this? And I was like, <laughs> oh you my could God, tell? you could tell. Yeah. And he was like, tell. yeah, dude, he's no, like, I can tell. Yeah. Like, don't do that again. Don't take That's on stuff you don't want you to. That's the last thing you want. Yeah. There, I'm like, there's, 
there's this creative freedom that I found. And at first, when I got into this form of like, first, when I got into making these videos with brands, they obviously wanted me to incorporate their thing into this video. And of course, they it usually comes out super salesy, like you're using the wrong tool for this job just to make it work or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Like mm-hmm. you're, you're using like 100% silicone on a caulking job on a trim. You're like, who's going to do that? Nobody's going to do that. But um, but then you eventually like get to the point where, and this is, I think where freedom really starts coming and like you become happy creating content is when I started doing just ad reads, like that was the greatest turntable that has ever happened to me. Cause where I was like, Hey, we're going to put this ad. It's going to be in the very beginning. It's not going to affect the, the audience retention part because it's in like the beginning of the bell curve and it's, we're going to cover that. And then I can do whatever I want to build as opposed to a company going, Hey, we're not going to name any brands, but here's a torch. (laughs) How many (laughs) things can you build with a torch? And you go, am I burning everything to hell? Like what am I doing? (laughs) What else can I do with a torch Uh, here? How many, how many table bases would you like me to torch? (laughs) (laughs) How many times do I have to explain Shishugi Bond to somebody on camera? (laughs) How many things do I have to set on fire in my parents' backyard? <laughs> you tell me. Um, yes. Oh, that's funny. But it's funny you say that's that good. because I've gotten a couple of offers for ad reads and I'm I'm the kind of person who I feel like when I watch myself on video, I'm like, you are so awkward. Why do people like you? And like, so for <laughs> me, it's like I haven't gotten to that point yet where I'm comfortable taking those. However, I think I finally have one coming up and it was really uh-huh. cool for them to just be like, yeah, do whatever project you want and just put this ad in. And I was like, wait, this is how this works. That's kind of cool. Right. <sighs> you get for your, yeah. So what helped me with ad reads is understanding that this is essentially you're a, like the same as like TV broadcasting thing. And they would hire some kind of cheesy person. Like, I guess what helped me is watching accounts, content creators, like, like that you respect a lot that are like mm-hmm. way bigger than you. Like, so for me, like demolition ranch, this, that's the guy with like, that does like gun stuff. And he's so basic. How, and that's not in a disrespectful way, but like his content is shot so basic where like he'll hold so a simple. GoPro yeah. in front of his face and our kids love all this content. And, and he's being silly, you know, he's got a wife and kids. So he's not like overly the top, like those obnoxious, like vlogger kids. But, it, but, but when he does an ad read, he goes like like super salesy and super fast talking that you know that's not him. But I think when you when you see that it's an ad read, and you and you hear their like fake voice that's fast and exaggerated and 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 very entertaining paired together, I think as a viewer who respects a content creator, you go, oh, I get it. You're trying to pay bills. That's totally fine. But it depends on the person. I think some people really hate seeing that from the people that they watch. Right. And And then some people understand it. And to me, to me, I'm like, what makes me feel like I sold out on something is when I go, this is why you should use this product on this when clearly it's not meant for this. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And I feel you. And that's why I like, and I think this goes back to like the beauty of us being able to say no to things because I have found myself only saying yes to product endorsements that I know I can use and that I actually like. Mm -hmm. And I don't have Mm -hmm. a problem like straight up telling a brand like this thing did not work for the thing that you wanted Mm -hmm. me to use it for. So let's figure this out. Like I've done that before um, Mm -hmm. because I I feel the same way. Like I don't want to, I don't want to endorse something that I don't believe in or like want to use or actually want to share. Right. Like we've done that before. I I think we've all been there before and like, it doesn't feel organic and it kind of sucks. And And the audience picks up on it for sure. Totally. They know. They know when you don't like the product. (laughs) Do do you find yourself, it's interesting you said you're like, uh, why is it hard for me to say no? And so you're questioning your own, your, your own way, how your own brain works. Right. But as a psychiatrist, do you find yourself finding those reasons or is it hard to kind of look at yourself objectively, objectively? Oh, I'm totally in therapy. Like as a therapist, I'm in therapy. So I work on my own stuff too. Yeah, I, 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 I really... I think like I can't be an effective therapist unless I'm like also in therapy and like working on Uh things in my life. And like for me, it's like the not saying no thing is, you know, I I know for like my group in a family of hustlers, like my dad worked like 12 to 16 hours a day trying to put food on the table. And so when an opportunity Mm -hmm. is given to me, I always feel this need to say yes to it because like I see how hard people in my life work to just be able to provide. Right. And so Mm -hmm. for me, for a long time, I was like, wow, this this opportunity is coming. And like I have 
grad school loans and I want to buy a house and I'm going to need like a truck at some point. And like there are all these things that are coming at me that are actually financially able to get me those things that I need to, you know, obtain in my life. And so I was saying, yes, 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 yes. And then I started feeling burnout. And then I was like, this is the problem. Like, this is why Mm -hmm. I can't say yes. And then had to kind of like teach myself how to step back from that, you know? Mm, Yeah. I think for me, it's so hard to do because I feel like, I think you had mentioned this, like when you say no to an opportunity, it's like, what if they don't want to come back or they want to work with me? Or what if this is like Mm -hmm. the last time they'll ask me? And I've had that with like my staging jobs where there was times where I just, I had to say no. And I remember coming to Alex. And And why did you have to say no? You had to say no because or else we don't have couches to sit on in our own house. (laughs) If I had said yes, we would have used furniture from our house. And so, but that took me like years, years to accomplish down the road is, is like, I'm at a point now where if I say no, I know I won't lose like my value and my business Mm -hmm. because of this. And so I, but that was such a learning, I don't know, process for me. It was like, they're going to hate me if I say no, they're going to like say, okay, I'm going to go find somebody else. And I'm like, "Ah." and it just hurts. I feel like. I just am not a person that says no a lot. So well, I think, and it's interesting. I think, and kind of you said where you feel yours, uh, where your mentality stem from your hardworking family, Mm -hmm. and but I think we all have this like famine mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're like, if I say no, they're never gonna come back, and 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 then and then it's like it's like essentially a business who doesn't that doesn't expand. If you have like a taco truck and you have way too many people coming, well, eventually you say no to people the volume of people coming in stops. But what's interesting with content creating um, or when you just have a business online like that, when you develop a branding and the branding grows, as long as you never stop, as long as you're always constantly evolving and are never comfortable and always dissatisfied in everything you do, I think what ends up happening is every single year, you're only going to be in more and more demand. Like I I always like I I kind of looked at like myself as a little case study and I was like, okay, this is a great year. There's no way next year is going to be better. And then like somehow it becomes better, but I only think it happens because you keep shaking things up. You go, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to like, I remember when I first started doing YouTube videos, I just did what everybody else did. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like, well, they've already dominated that space. Like they, like they're making cutting boards. They're making, you know, resin tables. They're making, you know, cool. And like, so my stuff goes on the last page. So well, what if I did stuff that it's like nobody wants to do because it's so, it takes too long to do it, like transforming a bathroom. Like that's like a month long process. Mm -hmm. It's like a full video and then you have to wait. But it's like, well, no, I'd rather do that because it's different. And so I think if you are constantly shaking things up and are dissatisfied and always moving, I think you're only going to be in demand more and more year after year. Yeah, I hope that's the yeah. case for sure. Yeah, I mean, look at you. Like, you blew up. Dude, I remember, like, when I was just growing my channel, We, you were, I think I had just hit, like, 50K, and you were at, like, 70. And I was like man, I'm going to, I'm going to catch up to him. Like, this is going to be dope. And then I like, you put out that bathroom, the, I think there's a shower video. Yeah. The master know, that, shower. Yeah, yeah. With like, you know, I can't compete with that thumbnail. Come on. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then you just like, like, it was a expo- thumbnail that did it. Yeah. yeah. And then you just like exploded. And I was like, so stoked. And I was just like, man, I hope one day I have growth like that for sure. Um, and I just keep it's, watching you like accomplish these like crazy cool projects. And, and it's really inspirational to see too. Cause I think, you know, there is, there is a thing like when you're first, especially starting a channel where it's like consistency, consistency. And then it's like, I was putting out all these consistent videos, but I wasn't loving everything I was putting mm-hmm. out. And like that sucked. And I felt like you could see that. So I've now yeah. gotten to the point just like you, where I just want to do stuff I love and it'll come out when I'm done. And yeah. hopefully people will still stick around for it. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot to be said about creating stuff that you love because that creates that longevity. I even know that, um, I remember, I wanted to start showcasing because again, I'd follow all these other accounts They're They're kind of doing things in a vlog format. And I used to think, okay, so you do a project, you do this build and then you do a blog behind it. So you're spending hours in front of computer writing. And then now you have to sit and record a stupid script to like dictate Ugh. over it. And I'm like, Ugh. that's so yes. time consuming. <laughs> and you're not saying things so right and all that stuff. And I go like, man, how much easier would it be if all I had to, like, I remember people ask me like, what's your favorite thing to build? I go, whenever the camera is off, because then I'm just building and I'm just like in this therapeutic flow. Mm-hmm. And then I realized like, if I could cultivate an audience and like go away from just 
doing this like speech dictation over it and do it like me talking to the camera. Yeah, I'm going to lose some people because some people just want to see the thing being done, like stop yapping, just do the work. But then I think I'm going to eventually grow an audience that's going to be like, no, no, we, we're here for the for the character. Like we're here for who you are. Totally. And w once that happened, once that audience was kind of cultivated very slowly, it's it's now it's like easy like because now like so now that she's filming with me it's it's easy transition where she's like hey just be how you are with me and mm -hmm. then we'll build we'll move something screws up we'll as long as it's doesn't feel like camera. we're faking it or forcing it which is what I love mm -hmm. it's, right it is very organic and it's like like even our pod like here we just banter like yeah. how we would <laughs> yeah and <laughs> at and home yeah the moving around man I think we all have to move around I think mm -hmm. the, the mistake I made in the very beginning is. I just kept doing what other people did. Yes. But the problem is, is they dominate that spot. So now I'm constantly thinking of like everybody and their mother, all of their views have slowed down. That's just, it's just the algorithm is weird right now. You know, now people, it's interesting. People want to add, ad companies are trying to spend money on TikTok now. So you're like, essentially TikTok is slow in my perception is slowly becoming what YouTube was to the bloggers were like, mm -hmm. Hey, make YouTube videos. Like, no, 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 no. I'm going to just write blogs. <laughs> And then next thing you know, YouTube caught up and people are like, oh, man, I should have been on the YouTube, you know, drive a while ago to now brands are like, hey, we're allocating funds to do TikTok videos. And you're like, oh, I need to keep moving around. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dang, so you have to take that horizontal video I spent like 60 yeah. hours making and make it a vertical one. Like, come on, yeah. dudes. Yeah. <laughs> That's how but, I write. You know, <laughs> but you know what? I th you know, what was the, one of the most inspirational. Why can't they just create one like. Right. What is it called? Right. Like, why One is that so ratio. hard? Why is it such a hard concept? Why? They do it on purpose. I remember Ben Ueda gave me some of the best advice ever. And I don't think he even meant to give it to me. I just, it's the way it resonated. He was like, you're not an expert at building anything. He goes, and you're not, your theme is not being a DIY. He goes, well, you are, you're a content creator. And so your job is to efficiently create content. And that, also, you know, pulls over to like different platforms and stuff like that. But like end of the day, I go, oh, OK, so it's like I just got to focus on like how to just keep making content. That's it. I don't mm -hmm. have to be an expert in anything. Mm -hmm. And 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 this was my next question for you was, do you now that you're, you know, because you've done blogging, too. Right. I think that's yeah, where we all I still started, my my blog. I always say my blog is my baby. Like that's where I started. So um, yeah. and yeah, I still keep up with it. Every video I put out still has a blog post. Um, awesome. You know, I think. It's also too from like an ad revenue perspective of like that passive oh, yeah. income is, you know, I am making ad revenue still off the website. There are, you know, I think that this is great, but a lot of people like blogging is dead. But no, like I have companies who are coming to me just pitching blog posts still like it. it mm -hmm. That That's is awesome. still a thing. Right. So, yeah, blogging is still um, is still a big part of what I do. Yeah. And so do you now that you're creating content across so many different platforms, do you find yourself almost thinking about you know, putting on this whole content creator mindset, do you find yourself thinking of like creating content that's in a different genre? Like, have you ever experimented or thought, had those thoughts about like, I know your boyfriend is a big cyclist, right? Like, mm -hmm. have you ever like been like, how cool would it be to like start a completely separate thing and a whole like different, I know John Malecki did like a barbecue thing because he has a passion for that. And so he's like doing both. Do you ever have that kind of itch to do multiple content? Well, um, I can't. I can't cook. Well, I can cook, but I don't like it. Um, I definitely can't like dance. <laughs> I have no rhythm, so that's out of the question. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do you have I, like any other hobbies you like? Right. Like I don't know. It's funny you? that you say that because I just feel like for me, like my biggest thing is woodworking and like mm -hmm. is building. Like that's my biggest hobby, and I think part of it too is because it's not my full time job, right? So I don't exactly. Really get like sick of it I mean like mm. that's a lie sometimes if I take on too much I'm like Ugh, like I'm hating it this month and like I have to just do something like a project for myself mm -hmm. um but yeah I don't know it's funny that you say that because I do find myself you you mentioned this before but like when you're building right like you're like in the zone like you are just yeah. like doing your thing like I'm not talking to the camera I'm just building I'm trying to get it done and so it's I feel flow. like, yeah. And so I feel like sometimes it is hard for like my Was that a hula move? <laughs> it was yeah. The flow. flow. That's nice. It's, 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 it's very aloha. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's aloha. I feel really very aloha. aloha in this video. <laughs> um, but I do feel like because of that, like I'm really a goofball in real life. And I feel like that doesn't come through in mm -hmm. my content sometimes. And I always think about that. Like, is there something else I could be doing where I would be able to show off my personality a lot more? Yeah. You know? Yes. I, I'm 100% on board for you doing that. And I think the reason why is, yes, you have a lot of personality to share. 
And on top of that, I think that also is what makes somebody follow you as opposed to somebody else, right? Like, right. Mm -hmm. how many videos of time lapses part. are you going to watch of somebody speaking in a monotone voice of what they did? Right. But like, once all of that, all the dust settles on there and people go like, well, I kind of want to have a little bit more to know of that person and their personality. And then they'll put on an Instagram live and you go, oh, so that's what they're like. And then they'll do a little bit more on camera. And you go, and so they piece th things together. So I think like you're only going to be setting yourself to be on top by putting your personality because you're now you have your branding and your personality and nobody else can beat that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Like I definitely find, you know, I love watching content creators who, you know, kind of do that vlog style thing um, where they're you get to like see them talk to you. and You feel like you're having mm -hmm. a conversation with them mm -hmm. and like it's not just them walking you through like I mean, that's what I do, but um and I've always been like, man, I want to be that person. But then I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't love talking in front of a camera all the time. Yeah. And when there's another person, it's a lot easier. That's yes. why I, yeah. But that's why and I love collaborating. Learn. Yeah. Yeah. But that's mm -hmm. why the collaborations are my favorite. Because when there's mm -hmm. another person there, I feel like my videos have such easier. a different energy. Like such a different mm -hmm. energy. I think that's why it's so fun to do podcasts like this. It's like you just, you, you, you don't really talk shop too much, but you just like, you're talking to a person as you would in real life. Mm -hmm. And so like you're talking in front of the camera. I'm talking in front of the camera. But it's it not this weird like interview format yeah. where it's right. like could be awkward and people don't know what to say. The first question was about menstruation with you. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's coming in hot on that one. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do it on YouTube. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but these are my favorite formats because I just feel like we're, we're just like we're all just shooting the shit together. And that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Is Definitely. there anything in uh, in the next year or two that you feel like you want to uh, you're, you're 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 planning that's going to be different or you're looking forward to? I'm really just hoping that this whole house hunt situation works out for us because we've been looking for a while and everyone's feeling this, but like pandemic really screwed up the housing mm -hmm. market for a lot of mm -hmm. especially on Long Island because a lot of people left New York City. Um, oh, so the, right. in, the inventory mm -hmm. is very low here because I mean in a lot of places we're only like a thirty minute train ride from the city, so it's like right. Right. So I'm really hoping that works out because I just feel like, and I'm sure you probably feel this way too. Like I have so many ideas of things I want to do and like so many like big dreams in my head of like things that I really want to accomplish project wise. And I like don't have the space for that. So my hope mm -hmm. is that that works out for us soon so I can start exploring some new avenues and, and new projects and like bigger things. Where are you building right now? Do you build at your dad's house? Yeah, so my parents, um, so I started, I started my little business out of like, I don't know, a four by five section of my dad's shed when I was in college because I was still living home, like trying to save some money in grad school. Mm -hmm. And then my parents moved and uh, their new property is bigger than the last one. So my dad and I built a 12 by 12 shed on the new property. So that's where my shop is. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. And how big is the shop, you said? 12 by 12. 12 by 12. My gosh. And your first, the shed was like a four by five, you said? Oh, yeah. Like everything Tiny. I did had to be pulled outside. Oh. Like there was nothing I could really build in there. And if it rained, it was a wash. Like I was like, this isn't, it's nothing's oh, happening. Yeah. yeah. Nothing happened. Um, so done. when I built, it's funny because when I built the dining table and the barn door, the sliding barn door, they like did not fit in my workshop. <laughs> so oh, like. God. In the videos, I'm actually climbing over my tool yeah, benches. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I literally oh can't gosh. fit in here with this project. So it gets I tricky. Have anxiety. Yeah. I have anxiety when I hear about like the lack of space because I my first third bay out of a garage was like a 12 by 17, which sounds like a mansion compared to the shed. Oh, that yeah. That's like the Taj Mahal. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, why can be bougie like that? Yeah. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> uh, to now, it's like a, like a 25 by like 17 or something like that. But like Damn. now, it's still like... Well, again, a subtle but still, flex, but it's, it's so small so to me. Like, already. <laughs> like, especially like having like kids and a family, you're like, you have the kids, the ski stuff and you have yeah. Christmas decor yeah. and then you and have. And then I want to park in the garage. So it's like, we can't use that bay for your stuff. Correct. Yeah. And There's so too much stuff. It's just it's this endless pursuit of like, it's never enough space. Like I'm yes. always like this close to, I have this like really bougie welding table. That's like five feet by I think six feet. 
And I can't tell you how often I'm like, I'm going to get rid of this thing. And I go, no, I can't get rid of it. It's like incredible to be able to weld on this thing. But it's like, where am I putting this stuff? Someday. Oh, I know. Someday. It's like for me, like my big, my big ambitious dream is to like just have like an outfeed table for my saw. Like that's all I want. It's like all I want. I don't want anything. I just want an outfeed table for my saw. It's like those, those kids out there like, I just want a pair of shoes. And here I'm yeah. like, about like, I, I do like and I don't 17. yeah like I don't mean to get salty about it but sometimes I'll see people in like a, a two-car garage and be like yeah my shop is so small and I'm like you yeah. mfr like you have no idea <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah oh like you want oh, small come funny. build with me for a weekend yeah <laughs> you're like I don't let myself to get too tall because I won't fit in my shop <laughs> yeah right I'm like I, I think it's funny because um actually justin maybe just uh came to visit me recently to do like a, a a video for his channel like a little docu-series on me and you know i always say that like i feel like people see my shop and they're like wow this is way smaller in person than it is online and i'm like yeah because oh. i'm a small human so like in my shop like yeah. it looks you know what i mean it looks proportionate yeah. and then you're like yeah, yeah. Had, like he had to literally like duck through the entrance to my right. shop like he couldn't even yeah. stand like really? he, yeah like every time Oops. he entered he was like ducking because he was gonna hit his head oh. God, oh, that's, that's hilarious. hilarious. Well, I love that you're it making fits it work. Me well. yeah. And it's cool because like you, I love the mindset that you have. It's like you, you work with, you got right. And it's yeah. not necessarily like how we all just got started where like the tools you had, you did it. But like also like living in New York, you're like, I don't have a garage, but I'm still building furniture, like ginormous you're still furniture. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that it's cool. And honestly, I think it, it also like instills this, like, this nice healthy level of gratitude for my space because I think sometimes we do get caught up in being like I wish I had this I wish I had that but I am very grateful to have my mm -hmm. workshop especially because I've been renting an apartment you know for five six years at this point and so if I was in an apartment like I wouldn't have a space to build right now so mm -hmm. I'm very grateful right. to my parents right. for letting me steal 144 square feet of their backyard to, <laughs> to yeah. build it well they kind of owe it to you right because you, you you've surprised you your dad with that crazy garage uh, uh transformation for his shop right yeah and I'll never live that down because like in the new house he's like so when am I getting my surprise oh, garage no. wink wink oh hand. yeah expectations yeah. And meanwhile I'm like I just gave you like a new bedroom what do you mean yeah. yeah it's it we, we give do, me some time please people like you and i we have like the best jobs in the world where we're like we could partner with the right brands to be able to like surprise somebody yes. with like yeah. a thing like that that's really cool that is it's my favorite part like awesome. i i like love like yeah exactly <laughs> there you go i have yet to be surprised i surprise her with paychecks every month that's what <laughs> I surprise her with. it's a great surprise yeah. <laughs> great surprise yeah. i wish someone would I surprise me with paychecks every love month. surprises <laughs> <laughs> um, those are my faves Somebody asked her, she's like, oh, he bought a Porsche. What did, what did you get? He was like, she's like, I get his paychecks. Every <laughs> yeah. What did you get? I was yeah. like, I think she has a better side of the deal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, your new car's nice. You have a nice car now. Look at you go. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, I definitely can't leave her now. Car. So I have to stay around for this. If I want to live this kind of lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm acclimated. Um, can't retire yet. Sorry. Well, Sam, hey, man, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. You're it was great talking to you. You're a blast yeah. to hang with. Um, this was seriously where, awesome. Where could people find you and where would you like them to look into your stuff? Uh, pretty much at DIY Huntress everywhere. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok. The blog is, the blog is DIYHuntress.com. DIYHuntress.com for the blog. It's still, it's still going strong. Um, Beautiful. And yeah, awesome. so I'm, I'm pretty easy to find, which is nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's great. Uh, well, then that's the case. Share with people your address real quick just to make it a little bit easier for them to find <laughs> Okay, you. no problem. Send me, send me Sour Patch Kids to this address. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Uber Eats, please. All right, Sam. <laughs> thanks so much. Sandwiches. We appreciate you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Bye. 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 Bye.